Hi, I'm Mitch Powers, and I'm here to talk to you about PenHip. PenHip is a set of x-rays that evaluates the hip joint for the amount of looseness, or what we'll call laxity. This laxity is the number one risk factor for a dog to develop hip dysplasia. So if we take a look at this model here, the head would be away from me and the tail would be towards me. The hip is what we call a ball and socket joint. So the ball portion is the femur and the socket portion is what we call the acetabulum on the pelvis. And so the ball should sit really nicely in the socket and it has a nice gliding motion due to the cartilage that's on the ball and within the socket. If your dog has loose hips, meaning instead of sitting nice and snugly in there, it's bouncing around and moving, what you're going to do is destroy that, that cartilage and develop osteo osteoarthritis. So this laxity is, is something that needs to be measured and this is what the difference is with pen hip that makes it so much more sensitive because it can measure this laxity the best. If we also consider, um, well, with pen hip, the three sets of x-rays. The first x-ray that is taken is the standard one, which most people know as the OFA um, radiograph. Basically, what that is is what we call a hip extended view. So the dog, instead of having all four feet on the ground, would be on its back. So the head would be up here, the tail would be down here. The feet should be here in a neutral position, but the femurs are extended down and then the x-ray is taken. And so what you're seeing on this extended view basically is the amount of potential subluxation or how much the hip is sitting into the joint or not into the joint. And is there any overt signs of arthritis that's present? The problem with this view is that dogs generally aren't walking around on just two legs and extending their legs out. There is the joint capsule, which is 360 degrees around the neck of the femur here, and of course on the acetabulum. And it is this joint capsule, which I've kind of tried to make with this model, so this would be the head of the femur in here with the little joint capsule attached to the neck portion and if we put it up again in this model except for now the head's coming towards me and the tail's in that motion if we imagine if we can get this to sit here the joint capsule attached to the femur here and the head sitting in when a dog is in its normal you know four on the floor position the joint capsule is loose allowing the dog to move its leg in multiple directions. When we take the dog and we stand him on the back leg here, what happens to this joint capsule is that it tightens. And when it tightens like, like this, so we go from here, sorry. We go from here and it tightens up, it's gonna make the, the hip appear tighter. It's gonna sit in more because that joint capsule is getting taut instead of being in its normal loose position. So actually, when we have dogs that are in this hip extended or that OFA position, the hips generally appear tighter because that winding up of that joint capsule. So with the pen hip, we do take this, this radiograph. We're looking for signs of any arthritis that's already, that potentially could be there. And just getting an idea of the amount of subluxation that potentially could be there. Are the hips sitting in well? But we know that this does not give us a very accurate amount of that laxity. The second x-ray is what we call the compression view. And basically, again, the dog would be on his back just like the hip extended view. So I'm just gonna move it in this direction here. But the feet are up in its normal would be its normal standing position. Sorry, it's easier to do it this way. So in this dog, again, the head is towards me. The tail would be away from me and the hips with the legs would be brought up so that the feet are up top there. And in this position, the joint capsule is in its loose position or its normal state. What 
this x-ray gives us is just how well the hip is is sitting in the joint okay um, no, nothing more than that that pen hip is really using this film for we just want to see how nicely the hip should sit in the bread and butter of pen hip is the next one so again the dog is still in the same position on its back with its feet up in the air but what we do is we have this distractor that will go in between the legs here have a picture so in this picture the head would be in this direction the tail in this direction this is the distractor kind of think of it as the thigh master the legs are up in its neutral position so the joint capsule isn't tight you put some pressure so that the hips are being gently subluxated or seeing the amount of looseness so if you have a bar that's pressing here it's going to move the hip out based on the amount of laxity that's in in that joint every dog has some amount of, of laxity that's present there so this is basically how it would look like on a model and then from this view we measure what's called the distraction index this is an objective me measurement so it's not subjective what they will do is in that compression view they will take outline the femur the femoral head there, the ball portion, find its center point, and then in that distraction view, where you have the bar slightly pushing the hip out, they'll again find the center of the ball, the femoral head, and calculate that distance, and then divide it by the radius of the head. And then you come out with what's called a distraction index, or a DI for short. The easiest way to think of about this number and in this example it says 0.75 is that 75% of the femoral head is luxating out so again if we go back to the model the head would be towards me when this dog walks the hip is subluxating about 75% what we know is that dogs that have tighter hips ideally below a distraction index of 0.3, so again, only 30% of the head um, luxating out, have really great hips. So like all your sight hounds, your greyhounds and things like that, generally have fantastic hips and they're all under 0.3. So the distraction index is like your cholesterol number. The higher your cholesterol number is, or the higher your distraction index is, the more likely you're going to get the disease. So in a dog with a distraction index of 0.75, that's a really loose hip, probably doing sports or daily running and frisbee or high impact activities is not ideal for your pet. And also the tighter the hips are also better breeding dogs. Um, and it has been shown to, in conjunction with other genetics um, testing to reduce the amount of hip dysplasia in the litter. The Seeing Eye Foundation, the military, all use um, the, the pen hip method to determine their, their breeding potential of their dog and whether or not the dog can function to do its job. So that in a nutshell is what pen hip is, is all about. And you can also do it, I should say, as early as 16 weeks of age and the distraction index does not change as the dog gets, gets older. Thank you.